Welcome back. This is part two of my building this little skiff boat. And you can see I made some pretty good progress. Uh, so let's take a look at it and then we'll go step by step on how I got this far. Everything is uh, lining up good and I've not had any problems whatsoever. I have named this little boat and I will give an explanation as why it's named Yuana. And uh, let's go step by step how I got to this point. Today we're going to start on line 36, and this is just a block of wood. It's called a strong back. It will not be used or left on the ships just to give it support while you do planking. Now planking, in this case, are just going to be these two sides. When you really get into modeling, you're going to have planking that may look like this. This is thin black walnut. Sometimes it's actually thicker and harder to bend and that's when you'll uh, use a bending tool or some sort of a device to uh, heat the wood to help it bend. In your kit there was a block of wood that could be anywhere from nine inches to a foot long and it looks similar to this. Actually this is the exact piece it was a foot long. I misread the instructions and cut it to a seven inch length and that was incorrect. So what I've done is I've made another one just like it little different kind of wood but it will still work. I want to try and simplify for you steps 36 through 40. You're making something that is called a, a strong back and all this is going to do is support this, uh, this ship so that everything lines up straight and it doesn't get twisted. It's kind of detailed and I think what they're doing is they're teaching you to measure and check twice and things like that. You're going to take and make a center line down the entire length. Then, then from one end you can pick whichever end you're going to measure seven inches. You're going to put a mark across. While you're at it you want to come back an inch so that the six inch mark another mark so that gives you a one inch channel right there. Next, from your center line up to where the, the, the closer line, the one that's six inches from the end or one inch back from the seven inch mark, you're going to make another line on both sides of the center line that is five sixteenths of an inch. Let me get a pointer here. Let me get that lead back in. So here's your center line. You're going to go out. 5 sixteenths of an inch. For me it's easier to use a digital caliper and although this will do inches or millimeters I switched to millimeters it's just easier for me to use. I converted 5 sixteenths and it, in millimeters it's 7.95 millimeters so that gave me the distance you want to measure from the center line out give yourself a line on that side center line out a line on this side those two lines go up to that six inch mark from this end. So that takes us through 30, step 38 with all those pencil marks. So at 39 you're going to take your uh, X-Acto knife and you're going to peel at an angle and I believe it's about a 45 degree angle, yeah. They want you to go at a 45 degree angle and you're going to start here and slowly work your way into that outside mark that you made on, on both sides of this. Kind of like whittling if you were ever a whittler. You don't have to do it like this. If you've got a tool that you can do it with, that's fine. I'm going to force myself to do it this way because I want to follow the instructions. Possibly one of the handiest tools that I've purchased is a mini uh, is a miniature uh, sanding belt, and this this will tilt some, but I can hold it in what I think is a 45 degree angle. I'm just going to make this a little straighter using this sander.
You don't need to worry about it being too pretty. 45 degree angle, try and match what you see in the picture. After you get those done, you're going to attach these two little pieces of wood. It gives you the measurements. I think I messed one up, so I made another one. And actually, I couldn't find one of the, this little piece back here. So if you remember, there was a little piece that hooked these two together. Well, this wood happens to be the exact dimensions that you need. It's uh, 3 30 seconds thick. So I was able to use that to make that. So that's the nice thing about working with wood. You can always get wood and, and uh, make it to size. So then these also are going to have measurements. You take those measurements and you make a center mark on each one. You line those center marks up with your center line. Glue them in place. This one at the 7 inch mark. This one flush with the back of this board. It's important to remember that this needed to be sanded off so you don't have anything hanging over. And I put an additional center mark right on the back of this. I don't know if you can see. I hope the focus is in focus. I also did the same thing on the ship. I have a center line here. So you're going to want that centered and you're going to want it flush. Then on this end, again, you're going to be on top of the board and you're also going to center this on your center line. For step 41, it wants you to make sure that this little block right here, that there's space here on both sides because you'll need, uh, you will need that space. And then you're going to take some push pins, which do, they do not come with the kit. You'll just have to pick them up yourself. And what you're doing is you're forcing this down because you've put a, a spacer here and then there's a spacer here. And what you're doing is you're, you're arching this. Let me show you on the uh, this side cut view here. And you can clearly see there's your block, the one at the back. Here's the one at the front. And see how this is now curving? So these uh, push pins are to hold that deck down flat. So to make it so that I could line up this back line, I put a clamp on it first and then I tried to attach those. But I did just notice that it must have moved on me because you can see my center line marks and I am off. So I will have to reset that. This covers steps 41, 42, and 43. And this part here should also be lined up straight with your center mark. And believe it or not, what I ended up doing to get those to push in is I took a pair of channel lock pliers, kind of opened them up some, put the uh, right around through here and squished it down in. That's improvising with tools. Step 44 is you're going to cut what is called a spall, S-P-A-L-L, -L, and it's going to go across to support this. And I think, again, this might just be a temporary support. You're going to use the 1 16th by 1 quarter uh, board that's, this is just short of 12 inches long. This is temporary, so it's going to end up being cut off. What you're going to do is glue it on this front side up at the top of these. I'm going to cut it to that length. It gives you a length in there, but you can just hold it up here and eyeball that. And so, since it's throwaway, I'm just going to clip it a little bit longer than what I need. I'm going to glue this on here. Again, you want this clear up the top. So flush with the top. Clip it on there. 
and because I'm using wood glue I'm going to have to use a clamp to hold it to let it dry. Step 45 is from this sheet this piece here and again this is I believe just a temporary support that's going to go up here. It's important that this is vertical so you don't want this tilted that way or that way so you want to make sure it pulls it straight a 45 degree angle down here so that this will be solid up against there. The only reason for that is to give you a lot more uh, glue surface so it'll hold good and tight. And probably should do the same thing on the tip. And then if this is slightly off, this is where we'll be able to kind of pull it over. This you're almost going to have to use super glue because you need something that sets up quickly. So I'm going to glue the base, which it has set up. And I did use both the uh, CA glue and this InstaSet spray. So I put the super glue on the triangular piece across the base. Then I sprayed that accelerant on the piece of wood down below. That seemed to help. I'm not going to glue it on here until this is really set up, and I'm actually going to reinforce this with an extra layer of super glue there and probably on the underside. The instructions advise you could set this in your lap and it may be more stable. For me, I've got this little vise, and this will work just fine. So I've got all this glued in place. You're going to start on the left side, as if you were sitting in the little boat. And you're going to align this edge with the top of this, and this edge with the back. The front should stick out slightly. Now, I'm talking just a very, very slight amount. I'm going to place that flush with the top of that, come all the way back flush with the top of that. I'm going to kind of hold it in place and what I'm going to do is put some little clips on here and I can keep adjusting because those clips will let me maneuver a little bit. Aligned with the bottom but the bottom I suppose could stick down a little bit because I can always sand that off because I can feel here it is a little lower. But the important is these two top parts matching up. Now that we have those marked, we're going to remove these. And if you've chosen CA glue, that's what you use. But as you know, I like wood glue because I like to clamp it and have more time to maneuver. So I'm going with my wood glue. And I will use these clamps again. I'm going to just repeat what I did before. Back here is too wide for a clamp. Rubber bands work just as good. Rubber bands will help hold the bottom of the ship in place also. We're going to let that dry. If you recall, I said I was going to put a different back on. I determined that it does have enough room because when I glue this side piece on, it hangs over enough. This, this will get sanded off. So here is the name of this little boat, Yuana KTG. Now, if you're puzzled by that, this is very similar to the little boat in the animated version of The Little Mermaid. So what I came up with was Yuana KTG stands for Kiss the Girl. I thought it was cute. I have both sides done. Just waiting for it to 
set up and dry a little bit more. And you can see this is going to work fine because it overhangs enough that I'll be able to trim that off. I hope someone else out there appreciates my naming my little skiff boat, Iwana. This has all had a chance to dry. Uh, you're going to take your CA glue, which I did do this, and just along the seams, go ahead and give yourself a coat. I also did the supports. Next, we can remove the push pins. We can separate it from this board. And that popped off pretty easily. This little board stayed there. Now you've got a little edge all around here. You can take your X-Acto knife, combination of that and sandpaper, and make it so it's flush. There's a technique I wanted. So if you look, do it from the bottom, you can see what you're doing. We are also going to do that at the front of the ship so that it's flush. And we're also going to do it at the back of the ship. I think for this back part I'm going to use my miniature belt sander. And I'll do the rest by hand. Believe it or not, we're all the way up to step 57, which was, the, you know, getting this sanded off. I'm still working on it. This little triangular piece it goes at the front of the ship. There are two of them that are supplied. This one is not used. These other things I think we will use, but you only use this one. And when I assembled this, I purposely raised it up just a fraction above the, the top of this uh, side plank. And then I just took the sanding block and sanded it level. Because I definitely wanted it level, I didn't want it down a little bit. Once that's in place and the glue has set up, you can remove this support that we put in. It's temporary. You want to be careful when you're doing all this. You don't want to get this far along and break something. I will mention that uh, in, in part three, these little holes that were left by those uh, push pins, they will be covered. And what the instructions recommend is you can take a piece of scrap, sharpen it with your knife, uh, much like a toothpick. Well, I've got toothpicks. So what I'm going to do is just push that toothpick in there and then snip it off. Do the same thing with another toothpick. I probably should have put a little glue on that, but I'll put a little from the underside. And the third one goes up to the front. That's gonna be a little trickier to get into. And then I will just sand those smooth. Super glue tip dries out, just snip it off. So actually those little, uh, those toothpicks are sticking out the bottom a little. So I will put just a dab of CA glue on each one. And after that dries, I'll come back and I'll snip those off and sand it smooth. This brings us to the end of part two, and I think that part three will conclude with the final uh, work on the, the little boat itself and whatever paint work I decide to do. So this is Boiler Dan 1, and as always, thanks for watching.